Algebra 1 students, almost said Algebra 2, this is not Algebra 2, it's Part 2, Part 2 of our Linear Equations instruction. So this is Part 2 of your video. And this is where we're going to talk about the forms of a linear equation and how to put these different, um, uh, how to write the different forms of a linear equation. So let's get going. There are three forms of the basic linear equation. You are already familiar with this one in the middle, slope-intercept form, where you know m is the slope and b is the y-intercept. So we've got that one taken care of. Check, we know this guy. Okay, let's look at these other two. This guy up here is called point-slope form. It is called that because in order to write it, you have a point, x1, y1, okay, x1, y1, which is a point that's on the line, on the line, and then you have m, the slope. So once again, the slope plays a, an important part here, and we will actually write point-slope form of an equation in just a minute. Point-slope form is convenient because if you have literally a point on the line and the slope, you can write the equation. And it's written as y minus y1, yes, always minus, equals m, and then in parentheses, the quantity x minus x1. You put in numbers for x1, y1, and m, the x and the y stay x and y, okay? Then we have standard form. Standard form is kind of the odd guy out. Standard form is written by manipulating the equation using math rules, using properties of equality, until you have the x and the y on the same side and the c, the constant, on the other side, okay? A, b, and c are going to be integers. That means that if you have equations in your, excuse me, fractions in your equation, not equations in your equation, <laughs> fractions in your equation, you have to get rid of them. And when I say get rid of them, you can do that the same way we did when we were solving equations by multiplying, using that LCD to make the fractions go away. And of course, we will see an example. So notice, x and y on the same side for that standard form, and then a constant on the other. Okay, now let's actually try writing one, taking one line and writing these three equations. Now the reason they're in this order, point, slope, then, and eh, let's use this, point, slope, then slope, intercept, then standard form, is that point, slope form is the easiest one to start with. So let's go ahead and actually take this equation and put it in point, slope form. So I need a point and the slope. So I am going to use the point that I see right here, 1, 2. So I'm going to use the point 1, 2. Now I need a slope. In order to find my slope, I do that the same way I've been finding slope, rise and run. I see a rise of down 2, so negative 2, and a run of to the right 1, positive 1, the slope is negative 2. To write point slope form, I'm going to take that template, and my suggestion to you as you practice with these is to write the formula down before you start. It's y minus, and y1 is the y coordinate of my point that I'm using. So y minus 2 equals negative 2 for m times the quantity x minus, and it's the x coordinate I'm using for the point that I have. And there you have point slope form, and that is point slope form. Now, take point slope form, that first one we just wrote, and I can write slope intercept form. Now, I know you're like, but Miss the comps, I can write slope intercept from, from over here, right? I know, yeah. Can you just trust my logic a little bit, though? So what you're going to do is you're going to take this equation right here. In order to write slope intercept form, you're going to solve for y. You're going to do a lot of solving for y. It makes for a more convenient situation. You're taking that equation and you're solving it for y and that means you end up with that good old slope intercept form and you know there's good information embedded in there. So how do I solve this for y? Well first I have to distribute. So y minus 2 equals negative 2x plus 1. I mean plus 2. <laughs> I wrote the right thing, said the wrong thing. Plus 2. Notice it's plus 2 because it's negative 2 times a minus 1. Now you see why we harp on this stuff. Then all I have to do is add 2. So y equals negative 2x plus 4. And I have slope intercept form. Finally, I want to get standard form. Now, I don't have any fractions, so I don't have to worry about fractions. 
But what I do have to do is I've got to get my x and my y terms on the same side. So all I have to do in order to do that, still using properties of equality, is add 2x to each side. Notice the placement of the 2x over here on the left. It gives me 2x plus y equals 4, and I have standard form. Now I would like to do that again with another problem, so let's go ahead and do that. Okay, so I took the exact same setup here, guys, and I drew in a new line. We're going to find all three equations for this line. If you think you've got the hang of this, hot shots, go ahead, pause it, try it out, see how you do. If you want to watch me wa work it out, I'm going to go ahead and start working it out. So start by finding a point. Now, it does not matter which point you choose, but choose something you can actually read on the grid lines. Don't choose a point like right here where you can't actually tell what the y value is. Don't do that. So I'm going to pick this one, negative 2, 1. So negative 2, 1. My slope, rise, run, is rise of 2, run of 3. My slope is 2 thirds. So y minus y1 equals slope times x minus x1. Now, it's x minus a negative 2. So that ends up a plus 2 right there. Again, now you see why we harp on this stuff. Now I've got point slope form. Yay, ta-da. Okay, done with point slope form. Now we got to get slope intercept form. So we're going to take this equation and we're going to solve it for y. This is a little less pleasant because we've got a fraction to deal with. So distribute the fraction. Let's see what we get. We have y minus 1 on the left. We have 2 thirds x. 2 thirds times 2 is 4 thirds. Now keep it simple. You're adding 1 to each side, but if I'm adding 1, I'm adding 3 thirds. So I'm adding 3 thirds right here. So 3 thirds and 4 thirds is 7 thirds. And we have slope intercept form. Not very pretty because it does indeed have those fractions in there, but that's okay. Okay, ooh, random radio change. Study radio got a little crazy. Okay, for this last one, we got to get x and y on the same side. So again, start with what you had. Start with what you had. Subtract the two-thirds from each side. So we have negative two-thirds x plus y equals seven-thirds. All right, now we've got x and y on the same side. Let's take this entire equation and multiply it to get rid of the fractions. Let's multiply it by negative 3. So that's negative 3 times negative 2 thirds x, which is going to come out to be 2x, because the negatives will cancel, the 3s will cancel. Negative 3 times y, so that's going to be minus 3y. And finally, negative 3 times 7 thirds. Negatives times positive will come out negative. The threes will cancel, negative seven, and we have standard form. All right, all right. Continuing on. For these two, I want you to start with slope intercept form and go to just, I'm sorry, start with point slope form. Let's write this down, LeCompte, don't just talk. First, I want you to find point slope form, point slope and I want you to convert it into slope intercept. And that's it for these two. So pause it and try it, please. I will write it out. Okay, and so I'm going to pause it to myself to write it out. So here comes your answers. All right, so I looked at the slope. Three, two. Rise of three, run of two. Three halves. I looked at a point. Two, one is the point. So x of two, y of one. I plugged them in, and there is my point-slope form. So if you're asked for point-slope form, this is one version. Now, why could your answer be different? Why could your answer be different? Bring that to class, okay? Why could your answer be different for point-slope form? Now, when you get down to it, though, your slope-intercept form has to look like this. Look, there's the y-intercept right there, negative 2, and then the slope we already saw. So why could this be different is my question, this will always be the same. If you, got, if you got this, you got it right. If you got something different for this one, you got it wrong. But this could be different. So I want you to bring that. Why could that be different? So here's my slo uh, point slope for this one. And I did it wrong. I just recognized that I did it wrong. So once again, my folks getting excited about finding my mistakes. Don't get to find my mistakes. 
That's a negative one half slope, Miss LeCompte. Do! Homer Simpson, do! Um, negative slope, not positive. And I fixed it. And it'll be, here's what'll be different. Will it let me erase this? Of course not. This would be a three. Do! All right, so at least I caught it before I finished the video. All right, what's next? What's next is, here's a slope and a point. Write me an equation. So instead of having a graph, you just get the slope and the point. That couldn't be easier, y'all. Because look, point slope form, y minus y value equals slope times x minus the x value. And minus a negative 2 ends up adding 2. So if I was going to stop here, that would be point slope form, and that would be my answer. Most of the time, though, they want you to go to slope intercept form. And then add 1, so negative 3x minus 5. All right, same idea. y minus y1, so minus negative 1 is y plus 1, 3 fourths times the quantity x minus 8. y plus 1 equals 3 fourths x minus 3 fourths of 8 is 6. Subtract 1 from each side, y equals 3 fourths x minus 7. And there you have your answer. So if you have a slope and a point, you can write the equation for the line. Okay, horizontal and vertical lines. Horizontal lines have a slope of zero, and their equation is a y equals some number equation. So you can remember that by using the silly little weird sounding acronym, HOI. Horizontal line, zero slope, equation is y equals. A vertical line, on the other hand, has a slope that's undefined and an equation that's x equals some number. So that's vertical, Pen tool, please. Vertical, undefined, x equals some number. Hoy and vux. So hoy vux is going to help you remember your horizontal and vertical lines. Let's see this in action. So I'm going to just write this down so I have it. Ahoy, matey. Vux. Okay. What's the graph of each equation? So what I want you to do is sketch yourself a little coordinate plane. You, do not, you don't even really need notches on the coordinate plane. I'm going to make four little black crosses. That's my little coordinate planes. Now, an x equals 4 line. It's really easy to graph this, even if you haven't memorized this situation over here. Where is x equal to 4? Where x is equal to 4, 4 to the right of 0, and let's pretend that's 4. And it doesn't matter where I am for y, x is always equal to 4. So you get this very crooked but vertical line right there. Where would x be equal to negative 1? Well, here. What about y equals 0? y is 0 all the way across this line, which happens to be the x-axis. So the line y equals 0 is actually the x-axis. And the line y equals 1 is 1 above that. So notice, hoy, horizontal, 0 slope, y equals line. Vux, vertical, undefined slope. Look, undefined. Okay, undefined slope x equals line on both of them. Here are the skills you need to know from this video. Okay, You need to know how to find and how to manipulate all three forms of the linear equation. So you're going to look for those practice skills maybe on IXL. Given a graph, you need to be able to find the equation of a line, usually in slope-intercept form. Given a point and a slope, you need to be able to find the equation of a line. And then you have to be able to write the equation of a line that's vertical or horizontal. And then I did not include these particular skills in this video, but we should be able to, from previous video, graph a line using x and y intercepts. So this was in a previous video. Okay, and given the equational line, find the intercepts, that was in the previous video. That was in part one. But these are all the skills you need to know. See you guys in class.